All right. My name is Alyssa Braden. I'm Molly Frank. I'm Samyukta. Hi, my name is Swati. Okay, tonight we're discussing LASIK eye surgery. Has anybody ever had LASIK eye surgery? Anybody in the class? No? Has any, do anybody know anybody that's ever had LASIK eye surgery? Yeah? Has anybody ever considered getting LASIK eye surgery maybe down the road? Too scared maybe? Yeah, I am too. Um, today we're gonna be discussing LASIK. Um, I am interested in LASIK. My sister and my father both had LASIK eye surgery done. I actually watched my older sister have it done in a big blow up screen in front of me. So it's, it's kind of interesting to me. I'm not quite brave enough to get it done myself yet, but um, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's a new technology um, that's kind of been in the making for quite a while. Um, LASIK stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomelusis. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I hope so. Um, it's a refractive type of eye surgery, so it corrects vision problems. Um, so it will eliminate your need for seeing eyeglasses or contacts, um, contact lenses. There, uh, LASIK eye surgery will correct three types of vision problems. Myopia, which is uh, being able to only see nearsighted, so you're able to see close up but not far away. Um, hyperopia, which is farsighted, meaning that you can see objects at a distance, but when you get close to them, you cannot see them. And then also astigmatism, which is um, blurry vision. One thing that everybody should know is that LASIK can only be performed by licensed ophthalmologists, so doctors only. Um, and as I mentioned previously, LASIK eye surgery or laser eye surgery was made possible by a collaborative effort from many different doctors and scientists um, together. Um, it wasn't, it was in 1960 that the carbon dioxide laser was invented outside of laser eye surgery. Um, it later became known as the eczema laser. Um, and then in the 1970s, a Russian ophthalmologist by that name, I'm not going to try that, Fyodorov is the last name, um, he experienced a patient who had fell and got an incision in his eye. So the doctor with his own hands shaved off part of the cornea and they found out that that corrected his vision problem. He did not need glasses anymore in that eye. So that interested the scientist and, or the doctor I guess he was, and he decided to look more into it. Uh, that specific Russian ophthalmologist did not have the funding to look into it as deeply as he wished he could have. But um, in 1978, American doctors determined that they could use this eczema laser to perform this eye surgery to reshape the cornea to improve vision. Uh, 11 years later, the first human eye was corrected by laser. And then in 1998, the FDA approved the eczema laser to be used um, in LASIK corrective eye surgery. Um, here. I think uh, that is all. Does anybody have any questions on the timeline of the history? It's kind of just a brief overview of the history of LASIK. Okay. It's almost about 50, 60 years. Old. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's been around for quite a while. A lot of people were trying to, especially when the Russian ophthalmologist figured it out, a lot of, it interested a lot of people to try to figure out how they could correct it. And it, it's interesting to me the history of it because the first guy, that Russian ophthalmologist, did it by hand. I can't even imagine, you know how shaky you are letting somebody come close to you with a razor blade close to your eye to, to do that. So it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm here to talk about the procedure, how this LASIK actually uh, takes place. Like uh, these are the tools they use, the eczema laser, corneal topographer, suction ring, microkeratome, aberometer. Uh, so uh, I better explain it when I'm telling the procedure, but uh, let me show a video what technology they use. <laughs> A targeted beam of light is sent through your eye and focused on the retina. As the wave of light rays are reflected back from the retina through the eye's vitreous, lens, pupil, and cornea, 
A sensor measures the irregularities in the wavefront pattern of light as it emerges from your eye. Using this measurement, the wavefront computer is able to create an accurate three-dimensional map of your eye's visual system, including specific imperfections in the cornea. This wavefront data is used to program the Exomer laser, allowing your ophthalmologist to customize the reshaping of your cornea. That was the wavefront technology where they make sheets of light and these sheets are used to measure the distortions or imperfections of the cornea and uh, using the LASIK procedure, you can go to the next, uh, they, uh, they cut off the part that has distortions so that uh, the light actually focuses on the right uh, center and then they'll have a clear vision. So initially the doctor after clarifying the fact that the patient is eligible for having this treatment, um, he applies an uh, aestheticizing drops and then marks the eye. You have seen the wavefront technology, it takes the um, sheets of lights using the technology and afterwards he slices the flap using the microkeratome. It means he removes the flap of the cornea and then uh, he sends the laser um, light into the cornea which uh, cuts off the distortions and then he closes the flap. So it just takes about 10 minutes of the treatment and then the, uh, the patient will have a clear vision. So I just want to show a short video of how exactly this happened. LASIK or laser assisted in situ keratomelusis is a surgical procedure intended to reduce a person's dependency on glasses or contact lenses. LASIK surgery is most commonly performed as a cure for myopia or nearsightedness but can also be used to cure hyperopia, farsightedness or astigmatism, corneal irregularity. LASIK is a procedure that permanently changes the shape of the cornea using a special laser and thus focusing the light rays exactly on the retina. The steps of the procedure are as follows. A suction ring is placed on the eye to stabilize and check the eye pressure. The microkeratome, a cutting instrument, is attached to the suction ring. The blade of the microkeratome is used to cut a flap in the cornea. The exposed inner layer of the cornea is then reshaped with an eczema laser. The corneal flap is returned to its original position. LASIK is an ambulatory procedure. The patient can walk into the surgery center, have the procedure, and walk out again, and is awake the whole time. Occasionally, the doctor may administer a mild oral sedative. So it's so simple, friends. Not really for the patients, but then <laughs> let's hope. I want to get it done after reading all this. So <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, you would or you would not? I would. I would. Okay, here are some common steps that need to be taken before you decide to have LASIK done. Um, one of the first things is you need to make sure you're a good candidate, which they say that you should be at least 18 years old because when you're younger, you're, the shape of your eye can still change. So the older, the better. Um, you need to have stable vision and no infections for at least a year before you can have it done. So then you have to go in and have an eye examination done. The doctor checks everything out, checks your medical history, and tells you whether or not you'd be a good candidate. And you have to quit wearing your contacts in advance. I think it said if you wear the hard contact lenses, you have to stop wearing those four weeks before surgery. If you wear the soft one, it's only like two weeks before. So um, you are not allowed to wear any makeup because they don't want anything to get in your eye as they're doing the procedure. And no hair accessories because as you lay on it, it gets in the way and your head doesn't lay flat. Um, after the surgery, you have to use eye drops for a while to make sure that you don't get infection. And then you'll have a follow-up appointment with the surgeon a day or two after surgery. And you'll have to go see them 
like on a regular basis for about six months. Uh, some of the advantages of LASIK, uh, the results can be seen right away. Um, I've heard of people like that day they leave and they still kind of have blurry vision, but you can tell that your vision is better. Um, it's a very fast procedure, and usually no more than a half an hour, but most of them it says takes five to ten minutes. Um, it's very accurate because it's done by computers, so that's also what makes it fast. Um, Usually, you don't need your glasses or contacts afterwards. They said once in a while you still do, but if you do, your prescription drops drastically. Um, without having the glasses or contacts, it saves you money on buying those, and it also saves you the hassle. Um, every time you go on a vacation, you have to make sure you have stuff for your contacts or make sure you have your glasses along, and different sports and stuff, it's easier without contacts or glasses. Um, it also says that it increases self-confidence. Um, there were examples of when you go out, if you aren't able to see as well as others, you may not want to like get involved in that activity, such as like going to the movies. If you're not going to be able to see very well, you may not want to do that. So your self-confidence is increased. You're more likely to be more social. And you can also enhance the results later on if needed. So if you don't get the exact results that you want right away, it can be fixed later on. Yeah, they cut more than they should. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, the disadvantages of laser treatment, uh, sometimes, uh, the surgery is like more uh, overcorrected or undercorrected. Now, like in most of the cases, the first surgery is uh, gives a clear vision, but sometimes you need a second surgery, which is called as enhancement. So this enhancement can be done if the cornea tissue is very thin. So um, this is an a disadvantage, and. Cases you sometimes need contact lenses or glasses. Uh, in cases where the lenses loses its ability to focus, and uh, sometimes the result may not be permanent. This can be seen in patients having far sightedness, and uh, some may experience visual aberrations like uh, double vision, hazy visions fluctuating visions and uh, increased sensitivity to light, <laughs> glares, halos, um, and sometimes it causes eye dryness. Eye dryness is uh, the redness or the burning sensation, and uh, sometimes it is the tearing of the upper layer of the uh, eye. And in very rare cases, you lose the vision totally. The, but that's a very rare guess. The Bjorks, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, risk is always there in every technology. Yeah, all right. So I don't want to back up. <laughs> yeah. So these are the risk, risk factors. Any doctor looks for patients before the surgery. Uh, high prescriptions, like if a person is. Um, like if he has a very high uh, farsightedness or short sightedness, then he, he is not a good candidate to uh, perform, you know, to undergo to the surgery, uh, because mostly in the surgery it involves removal of uh, corneal tissues, uh, and uh, the other reason to be considered is the thin corneas. Like, uh, if, a per, if for any patient, the thickness of the cornea is first measured, and if the thickness is very thin, then it's not safe for the person to go through the surgery because it actually involves removal of corneal tissues to correct the error. And, uh, yeah, abnormal corneal curvature before the surgery, a person, a person has to go through the measurement of his corneal shape and curvature. And if it is 
like any other normal person then he's a good candidate to go through the surgery and and dry eye if a person already have a dry eye as in my case so it's good if i don't go through the surgery <laughs> yeah and a large pupil um patients with large pupil may be more prone to noticing the halos and glares so you know the measurement of the pupil size is important before a person goes uh, i mean if he like to have a surgery so that's it okay question or comments the microphone is west for what it is any questions or comments okay microphone please Microphone with me or somebody? Another one? He gave it to you. Oh, he gave it to me. He gave it to you and it was left. It's right back there. Okay, come on. So, we pass it around here, please. Color blindness. Color blindness. Yeah, they can't digest. Exactly, say which color is what. And mm -hmm. I did this surgery effective for the color blindness or only for the plain one? Uh, plain black and white one. I did not get that for instance. Yeah. If somebody has color blindness. Yeah, I don't think it corrects color blindness. Yeah, no, is that what you're asking? The only things that I found was the far-sightedness, near-sightedness, and astigmatism. Right. I never saw anything. Oh, yes. but give it time. I'm sure yeah, it will eventually. So something to discuss more. Any other questions or comments? Questions or comments? Okay, Todd, can you please pass it to um, How much does the surgery generally cost? And is it covered by insurance? It, I do not believe it's covered by insurance. Does it, it consider like cosmetic? Plan. I guess it would be. Plan. Yeah. Mine, Some I know. Food. Mine is not. Neither my sister nor my father were. But I think it used to be around $5,000 for both of them. Oh. Yeah. I think a lot of it Some depends of on what your initial eye exam shows and like how much work they have to do. And I think it's going down a lot. Like you can get fine places, <coughs> discount. Please, the guy surgery for like fifteen hundred dollars an eye. I don't think I try that. But two easy payments of twenty nine dollars. One here, please. Back in India, it was fifty thousand. It's cheaper in Canada. Okay, another question. I got a good question for you. You showed the flap of the retina being open and closed. Yes. Uh -huh. When it's closed, is it somehow? Yeah, like uh, bandaged back together somehow. <laughs> no, they say that uh, the. Flap takes uh, only few minutes to uh, um, fix yeah. up, and uh, yeah, it, it takes very few minutes to so it's fix like up. Self, yeah, so, so it's they like put some yeah. yeah, they put some drugs so that uh, it's again it's normal again. So yeah. that should not be a problem. Very good. Well, one more question, if any. If not, let us give them a hand, please. Many different doctors and scientists um, together. Um, it wasn't. It was in 1960 that the carbon dioxide laser was invented outside of laser eye surgery. Um, it later became known as the eczema laser. Um, and then in the 1970s, a Russian ophthalmologist by that name, I'm not going to try that, Fyodorov is the last name. Um, he experienced a patient who had fell and got an incision in his eye. So the doctor with his own hands shaved off. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's a new technology um, that's kind of been in the making for quite a while. Um, LASIK stands for Laser Assisted In Situ 
keratumilusis. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I hope so. Um, it's a refractive type of eye surgery, so it corrects vision problems. Um, so it will eliminate your need for seeing eyeglasses or contacts, um, contact lenses. There, uh, LASIK eye surgery will correct three types of vision problems. Myopia, which is uh, being able to eye surgery. Anybody in the class? No? Has any, do anybody know anybody that's ever had LASIK eye surgery? Yeah? Has anybody ever considered getting LASIK eye surgery, maybe down the road? Too scared, maybe? Yeah, I am too. Um, today we're going to be discussing LASIK. Um, I am interested in LASIK. My sister and my father both had LASIK eye surgery done. I actually watched my older sister have it done in a big blow-up screen in front of me. So it's, it's kind of interesting to me. I'm not quite brave enough to get it done myself yet, but um, I'm able to only see nearsighted. So you're able to see close up, but not far away. Um, hyperopia, which is farsighted, meaning that you can see objects at a distance, but when you get close to them, you cannot see them. And then also astigmatism, which is um, blurry vision. One thing that everybody should know is that LASIK can only be performed by licensed ophthalmologists, so doctors only. Um, and as I mentioned previously, LASIK eye surgery or laser eye surgery was made possible by a collaborative effort from many All right, my name is Alyssa Braden. I'm Molly Frank. I'm Samyukta. Hi, my name is Swati. Okay, tonight we're discussing LASIK eye surgery. Has anybody ever had LASIK?